wait. Emma Prasovsky in the center circle for the Cornhuskers. And away we go. Kick deep down the near sideline. Headed away well by Danica Austin, starting her 83rd straight game on senior day. A constant fixture in this Northwestern lineup over the past four or five seasons. Throw in for the Cornhuskers. And they find Dale early. She's able to shake Austin and play it into the box, but nobody's home. I stand corrected. There is somebody home, and what a header save by Emma Phillips. Cornhuskers attacking early so far, Bria. Yeah, and this is exactly the type of play that head coach Michael Moynihan expected from Northwestern. He said in scouting the Cornhuskers that they play so much more direct than the Wildcats are used to, and we see it right there, their first scoring opportunity, just taking it right off the kickoff. They've got a lot of scoring opportunities. That's why they are tied for 15th in the country in goals per game at 2.75. Dale, open, the shot deflected and saved by Riley Fitzpatrick, who's got three saves in four of the last five games. She's been key for keeping Northwestern in a lot of their recent Big Ten contests. Yeah, like we mentioned, I mean, the scoring troubles for Northwestern, they've only really been able to keep in those games, a lot of, a lot of ties in there in the past couple of games. So Riley Fitzpatrick definitely responsible for that. Foul there on Nebraska's Emma Prasovsky. She was battling with Meg Bodie, the senior midfielder on Northwestern for that ball. Regazzoni with it now, plays it near side to Austin who will play it back to Fitzpatrick. As you mentioned, Bria, Northwestern a lot less direct than Nebraska, trying to take their time. Look out as Sadie Waite nearly makes play on the ball, but Northwestern able to get it across midfield for the first time on the border of the attacking third. Into the middle, that's Josie Olesino with it. Olesino tries to make a move, but Sarah Weber takes it away. Weber clears it up field, and a misplay there by Emma Phillips. Luckily though, Danica Austin there to recover. She will play it over to the far sideline and Northwestern will try again. Now a long ball looking for Del Carmen. She's fouled from behind to the dismay of the Northwestern fans. The official will not let that stand. That was Lauren Anglin, the sophomore defender from La Vista, Nebraska, and she will be carded less than two and a half minutes into this match. What a turn of events. This Nebraska team is physical and you see it right there as both players tumble to the ground. Nebraska is second in the Big Ten Conference in fouls and so Northwestern is gonna have to match up against their physical play all afternoon. Indeed they will, but Josie Olesino breaks behind the defense that time. She has not scored or assisted on a goal since her injury in the game against Boston, but looking to make it three straight years making an all Big Ten team. That was a good run from her, showing some promise potentially for the rest of this game. Yeah, it was really smart for her to go on the, the back side of the defender, trying to back cut it and force her to have to make a very physical approach. And it was a great ball too to set up the attack by Olesino. It looked like it was gonna be a one-on-one -on -one before Anglin tripped her up from behind. The play is being reviewed though. Alessino quickly moves in front of the ball. Bodie will take. No, she will not. It'll be Regazzoni into the box, but blocked away by the wall of the Cornhuskers. Northwestern retains possession, though, with Doucette. She plays it into the box. It's blocked away and cleared by the Cornhuskers back to near midfield. Headed back into the fray by Austin. Dale takes it, clears it, and it's back at midfield. And off of Meg Bodie, out of bounds, Nebraska will take over possession and move quickly. Deep throw into Sadie Waite. She can't contain it. And now there's going to be another foul on Northwestern, looks like that was Waite contacting Bodie again. And as we talked about, Bria, Nebraska, very aggressive early in this game. Very aggressive, and the officials are letting them know early that they're not gonna let them play too much if they're gonna make those early calls. Indeed, ball up near side to Megan Norkett. Norkett quickly to Olesino, Olesino to Del Carmen. Del Carmen, through ball to Norkett, what a beautiful pass, Norkett into the box, trying to make a move. Northwestern fans wanted a foul there, but no call as it's taken away from Norkett. Here comes Dale near midfield. She will try a through ball. This is Sadie Waite, but it's too much for her and out of bounds. 
the official informing Nicole Doucette to back up where she's throwing the ball in from. Trying to take advantage of the quick throw a little bit, unable to do so, but Northwestern has it near side. Just about four minutes gone by here in this opening half. And Northwestern will work towards the far side. They're advancing towards the south goal here in today's match. And they have it up near midfield with Bodie. She's touched the ball a lot already. She will play it up to Haas. Haas cannot keep the ball. And now the first foul call on Northwestern today. Good defense by the Cornhuskers. Looks like this is Anglum going to take the free kick from about three yards back of midfield. And it looks like she's gonna go deep with this one. She is indeed almost into the box, headed away nicely by Phillips, but Nebraska still has it. And now we've got a call. Looks like there was a player down for Nebraska. Might have been Gwen Lane who's starting for the first time in a while for the Cornhuskers. And they'll have a free kick from just, from well inside midfield. Rhea, what do you think they're gonna do here? Well, it's not gonna be any of the trickery we saw on the other end. No, it's not. They get it in quickly, trying to set it up in the box, but it's poked away. Beautiful play there by Regazzoni. And Nebraska will have to reset things slightly. It's Anglum at the top of the field with it. She'll try to play it in for Dale, but it's headed away nicely. That's Phillips again. Saved nicely by Doucette on the sideline. And Northwestern looking to counter maybe. But the Cornhuskers, aggressive trapping early. And they will take over possession. Nice steal there by Haley Peterson. And now Dale's got it unmarked. Now she is marked and she clears it to the middle. This is Ella Guyot with it. Still with it, shoots and it's off her teammate. Blasted it right off of Sadie Waite. Northwestern retakes possession again. A lot of turnovers here in the early going. Peterson with it, makes a sweet move and plays it back to midfield. And now a cross field pass. That was Lauren Anglin looking for Jordan Zaid who has it now marked by Haas. And Zaid will break right past Haas, plays it into the box, but it's poked away. That was Danica Austin, the graduate student making a play there. Now another play into the box, nobody home at all for the Cornhuskers. And Fitzpatrick will gobble up the ball to end the threat. A long sequence there by the Cornhuskers, threatening almost every single time that they get the ball. And part of that is that Northwestern just couldn't clear it out effectively on their defensive half, something that they're gonna have to improve, especially not taking as many touches. Yeah, you're right, the trapping of the Cornhuskers proving very effective so far. Nearly a steal there off the foot of Austin by Dale. And now Northwestern will clear it up above midfield. Nice play there by Nicola Hauk to get the ball into the feet of her teammates. And now Anglin will try and reset it. She will give it back to Sammy Hawk, her first real touch of the game. And now Nebraska will try and counterattack from deep in their own end. A tough physical play there. Doucette got tangled up with Dale and Northwestern takes over. But a bad pass there by Olesino, rolling down the sideline, staying in. Looks a little bit like a punt would in football, driving lane way back. And that one tipped away out of bounds by Araya Del Carmen. So Nebraska keeps possession. This is Peterson. And Peterson fouled from behind by Olesino. North Nebraska, excuse me, moving quickly. Sarah Weber with it. Weber looking into the box, a nice pass. This is Guyot chasing, but out of bounds. And another goal kick this is already the second goal kick of the game for Northwestern. Nebraska really trying to find the box early, but so far, limited success. Yeah, not only trying to find the box early, but they play so fast. You see off of this foul here by Josie Alessino, Nebraska's just gonna set it up right away and just keep on going. Indeed they will. Northwestern a throw in on the far okay. side. And now a whistle. I'm, not, I'm okay. The referee once again asking the Northwestern thrower to move back. This is Brooke Miller. That's the second time we've seen that today. So Northwestern may be trying to counter the aggression 
A little sneaky trick of their own moving the throw up. It hasn't worked either time. And this throw in, tipped away by Haas. Can't retain possession. And the assistant ref will call a foul. Looks like Haas and Ella Guyot got tangled up. Northwestern fans saying Guyot blocked the ball. We'll see here. Haas doesn't have the ball, goes off her shoulder. A lot of hand fighting there. Guyot goes down, gets the call. So it's another free kick for Northwestern. Guyot, no goal so far this year, the redshirt freshman. She does have an assist. Now Nebraska will set up for a free kick on the far side. Kick from Cornhuskers into the box and a header effort by Sarah Weber over her head. And that kick powerful enough to roll all the way out of bounds. So it'll be a deep throw. And Bria, when we talked to Coach Michael Moynihan, he mentioned that he wanted Northwestern to be more physical on set pieces, especially in the box. Seems like so far they've done a pretty good job at that. Yeah, he said that that's where they've kind of run into a couple mistakes in the last few games is not being able to clear those out effectively. Trouble clearing it out here. But Brooke Miller comes across the field to push it to the sideline. Northwestern, though, still in a lot of trouble here. But now they get it away. Araya Del Carmen with it. And she pushes it to Brooke Miller, Northwestern. Courting danger there, but able to avoid any slip-ups. And this is such an interesting matchup because these teams' style of offense, offenses are just so completely opposite. Northwestern plays possession a lot. That's usually their game, but Nebraska, on the other hand, once they get the ball, they're not going to have it by their feet for too long. That kind of explains the result of last year's game, a 4-2 Northwestern win in Lincoln. When Coach Moynihan talked about that. He said that it was a real chaotic back-and-forth game. Northwestern played Nebraska style and won doing so, but they weren't exactly comfortable with it. This is Guyot with it. Into Weber. Back out to Guyot. Looking for Dale. Has Dale marked by Doucette. And Dale will play it to the middle. Nobody home. Haley Peterson, the closest Cornhusker. But a miss clear by Northwestern. Ball into the box. Wait, chasing after it. And it looks like she keeps it alive there in the far corner, but goes down. Nice defensive trap from the Wildcats. And it's Emma Phillips pushing it upfield. Bodie now with it. And Nebraska working far to near side. Or Northwestern working far to near side this time. Austin taking her time. And a long pass to the sideline for Brooke Miller. She contains it. Tripped up there by Guyot, but the Wildcats keep the ball and clear it downfield. No white jerseys in the same zip code, and Nebraska will take back over. And immediately with a deep clear, nobody home for the Cornhuskers either. And Phillips with it again. That pass taken away by Peterson, and the Cornhuskers on a break. At least they were until Miller broke it up. A lot of sloppy play here in the early going, and most, most of it contained on Northwestern's defensive half of the field. Now they'll try another attack. Meg Bodie chasing after that ball, but she will not get it. Hawk well out of the box and clears it upfield near midfield. And the ball goes out of bounds. Cornhusker took a tumble. That was Guyot. And looks like that will result in a throw for the Cornhuskers. No, a free kick, excuse me. So once again, as you mentioned earlier, Bria, the physical play not being allowed by these officials. They're taking their time early to dictate the physicality of this game. And now North Nebraska on the far side. That was Zaid with it. Out of bounds, but the Cornhuskers retain possession. Looking like it's going to be a deep throw and a flip from Zaid into the box, but headed out of there quickly by Miller. Basically right back to Zaid, so we'll run it back once more. And these flip throw-ins can be so effective, almost using them as a corner kick. Mm -hmm. If she doesn't flip that time, does some mock boos from the crowd. And Waite couldn't play it to her after being trapped in the corner. And Northwestern will retake possession. 
So Nebraska has controlled the ball and the pace pretty effectively, but once they've gotten into the box, Northwestern's defense has held firm. They'll have to hold firm again here though. Unmarked is Prasovsky. Tries to play it into Dale. It was too wide for her, and now Northwestern on a counterattack, a two on four. Bodie looking cross field, pass behind Norkett, but Northwestern on the attack again. Bodie now. Out to Olesino, Olesino looking for Doucette, has her. Doucette to Bodie. Olesino, a beautiful passing action there, but Anglum steps in to end the run, and now Anglum looks like she's gonna try and take it herself. Pushing past Regazzoni, looking in for Dale. Not enough mustard on that hot dog, and Austin headers it away and out of bounds. Just going back to that last transition, by Northwestern. They had a beautiful opportunity with Megan Norkett streaking on the right sideline, but Meg Bodie just plays that a little bit behind her, and even a couple more passes that were connected. Had some good ideas, but just couldn't, couldn't follow through. No, they could not, but now Nebraska can't follow through either, and another poor pass on the sidelines, and it'll be a Northwestern throw as we've reached the 15-minute mark of this game. Half an hour to play in this first half. Still nothing, nothing here in Martin Stadium on senior day for the Wildcats. 11 seniors honored for Northwestern. Indeed, a senior heavy team, an experienced team, one that made the NCAA tournament last year and looks like they have the capabilities to do it again if they can figure out some of those offensive issues. And a, whoa, a high header effort there from Lauren Anglin trying to climb the top over Meg Bodie to get the ball, but did so illegally, and Northwestern, another free kick. And they'll set it up to Austin. Austin to Olesino. Olesino finds Doucette. Doucette to Olesino. Lots of aggressive effort by even the Husker forwards on defense. They're not making it easy for Northwestern to get anything set up. This might be a good one, though. A beautiful pass by Regazzoni. Del Carmen pokes it away from a Cornhusker, but it wasn't quite good enough and Northwestern forced to retreat back into their own end and try again. Long ball. Can Norkett get to it? No, she cannot. Knocks down Gwen Lane. And she is not going to be rewarded for that. One Northwestern fan below us telling the official that he's got to learn what a dive is. But as you can see on the replay, definitely a little bit of a collision there from Norkit. Yeah, just gets her elbow a little bit on the defender's shoulder. Indeed. And once again, the long passes for Northwestern unable to connect. As Nebraska gets the free kick and the ball once again over the head of Sarah Weber. Just 5-6, but has made a lot of efforts to head the ball so far today. Norkett trapped on the sideline and taken away. Beautiful defensive combo by Prasovsky and Lane. But Northwestern has the ball again. Here comes Bodie down the sideline. Finding Del Carmen. Del Carmen shoots, and it's saved by Hawk. A beautiful setup. Great through ball to Meg Bodie. But Araya Del Carmen unable to get the shot to go. A beautiful save by Sammy Hawk. That is number 41 for her on the year. And that was a really promising offensive sequence for Northwestern. Most of the game has been played in their defensive half. And so to see an opportunity like that, even though it didn't go in the back of the net, it was a good combination to have under their belt. Indeed, they were able to counterattack and slip through the defense. They're probably gonna have to do that again because as, as you've mentioned, Nebraska has controlled possession and continues to do so, but a beautiful defensive play there by Haas to stop the run from Zaid. Nebraska, a quick throw. Looks like that is Ella Guyot being double teamed and losing the ball, cleared away by Haas, but into the box, loose ball, and it's pushed out of bounds by Nicole Doucette, a dangerous play and now Nebraska with a chance for a set piece. This is where this team could be really dangerous, and this is an area that Northwestern struggled in lately. 
We'll see what they do here. This is Warren Anglum setting up to take the corner kick. Nebraska is tied for 18th nationally in corner pick kicks per game at seven. This is their first of this matchup. Anglum, low and into the box, cleared away but right to Dale. Dale shoots, blocked away by two defenders and finally Fitzpatrick dives on it. It looks like that deflected off of Nicole Doucette and Emma Phillips before Riley Fitzpatrick finally got to it. But a lucky break for Northwestern that the shooting lane was so clogged up there. Yeah, you just see it on that shot. A couple defenders get their feet on it before Fitzpatrick can. And even that corner kick was forced by a miss clear by Nicole Doucette in the box, maybe one that she should have let slip through to Fitzpatrick and just let her handle it. So, I mean, something so important as a defender is just listening to your goalkeeper. When she calls you off, you definitely need to listen. And on the other hand, Riley Fitzpatrick has to be communicating back there. Northwestern free kick now. Norkit got tripped up by Gwen Lane and Northwestern will play it conservatively. Set it up to Phillips on the far side. And away we go once more. 20 minutes into this first half, still a scoreless tie. Regazzoni plays it to the sideline and now we go back across Northwestern's half once again. Played all the way back to Fitzpatrick. Dale bearing down on her, she gets it away. Northwestern's gotta be really careful here. A bad pass from Regazzoni. Weber bearing down on it. Northwestern clears it away, or do they do set deep in the corner? And it looks like that's going to be another corner kick for the Cornhuskers. Great play by Sarah Weber to set that attack up. Yeah, Nebraska never really truly quits. I mean, Sarah Weber going against do set in the corner and forcing another set piece opportunity for the Huskers. Weber, 2022 first team All Big Ten. A lot of that was due to her scoring with 10 goals, but her effort on that play clearly shown as well, and it's a corner for the Cornhuskers. Played into the box way high, and two efforts at it by Guyot. Now into the box again, and Dale's header is high. Good play there by Anglem in an effort to get it to Dale, the nation's leading scorer, but her first shot on goal of the game is high and wide, as you can see there on the replay. So once again, a Nebraska scoring threat snuffed out by something just a little too much power on it. And Northwestern will try and respond quickly. Ball up near midfield to Bodie. She traps it but loses it. Now Hauk with it, she will play it up to Northwestern bench, I suppose, and it will roll out of bounds for a goal kick for the Wildcats. Nebraska dominating possession so far in this first half, Rhea. Yeah, definitely, like I said, most of this game has been played in Northwestern's defensive half. Just can't really seem to clear the ball out effectively. And that's evidenced by the shot count. Six for Nebraska, just two for Northwestern. But they might be able to even that up a little bit here on the attack. Here comes Bodie. Bodie, a beautiful through ball. Haas with it. The cross. Bodie in the middle. She shoots. And it's wide. Very nearly snapping a two week scoring drought. And you could hear the disappointment of the fans. Still a beautiful play by the Wildcats, though, as we can see on the replay. A great leave. Beautiful shot from Bodie, just a little outside. And right before that, it was such a nice cross by Ella Haas, one touches it into the box, giving Bodie that chance. Northwestern on the attack again, setting up for Norkit to potentially cross it. And she will put it inside to Del Carmen, looking for Norkit on an overlap, but it did not work. Norkit a little delayed there on her attack, and the ball deflects off of her for a goal kick. In the past minute or so, Northwestern has had two really solid attacks. Yeah, I think there was just a little bit of a miscommunication there between Del Carmen and Norkhead, and that's kind of been a little bit of a theme all day for the midfielders and forwards. On both sides, too. Nebraska's had a couple miscommunications as well. 
woman down for the Cornhuskers. And it is definitely going to be a foul call there. Trotting up field is Ella Guyot. As the Northwestern fans continue to verbally accost the officials today. I'm not sure I disagree with any of the calls so far. It's been a pretty physical game. And you can see there on the replay that Guyot goes down hard after being hit from behind. The officials set the standard early about physical play, giving out that yellow card to Nebraska. So both both teams just had to adjust, knowing that they're most likely going to call a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Cross into the box, misplayed. Dale got a head on it, crushing the Northwestern defender, who is still down. That looks to be Danica Austin, walking it off slowly. A hard hit from Dale from behind, going for the ball. You can see her ball up in the air, and Dale just comes from behind and knocks Austin to the ground. That is a three-inch height advantage for Dale, but it feels like, probably feels like a lot more when you're getting trampled from behind. And now another Northwestern player is down. That's Gwen Lane again colliding with Megan Norkett. And man, oh man, you said the official's trying to set the tone early, but it seems like if they're not careful, this game could get out of control quickly. Norkett tying her shoe and quickly advancing up. This is going to be Nicole Doucette, who will play it to Austin. Austin looking for Norkett, but instead finds the head of Nebraska's Gwen Lane, and Northwestern will have the throw in, moving quickly. Looking for Bodie in the middle, but nothing doing there as Houck plays it away. And here comes Eleanor Dale, the nation's leading scorer, going one on everybody. Trying to get past Austin. Still with it. Nebraska fans wanted a penalty. As Dale goes down, Austin stays up. Northwestern retakes possession. And here comes Bodie all of a sudden. Look out, folks. Araya Del Carmen with it. Del Carmen through ball. Beautiful pass. Shot. Deflected out of bounds. That was Haas with a beautiful opportunity until Jordan Zaid came in and knocked it away. But a corner kick for Northwestern. What a beautiful counterattack, as you can see on the replay. A great pass, but then a deflection on the shot. Yeah, and great job by Araya Del Carmen to use the grass in front of her. She didn't get too wrapped up in having to send the ball forward. She had a lot of patience there and just, you know, had it right in between those two Nebraska defenders. Bodie, the corner kick, headed away. High, loose ball, Bodie going for it. Almost gets it. Husker defender goes down and Nebraska with possession. This is Peterson with it. Peterson makes a beautiful move. And here come the Cornhuskers. Maybe not, and we got a foul there. Doucette, it looked like, took the ball away from Peterson and then Peterson might have grabbed her as she went by. And it's a yellow card for Haley Peterson, the second yellow of the game on Nebraska. So now they've got to be really careful. Here's the replay. Yeah, just taken away by Doucette and then the jersey grab by Peterson. Clearly an offense. Peterson looking back at the official, but certainly no mistaking that call there. You could clearly see the jersey getting tugged. Yeah, that's going to get called every time. And Nebraska came into this game, like we said, Second in the Big Ten in fouls. By this game alone, they might just take that number one spot. Free kick from Bodie, lofted into the box. Punched away by Sammy Hawk. Flying like a hawk to keep that scoring threat negated. But Northwestern still with it. Nork at the shot, but bounces right into the chest of Sammy Hawk. Two great plays there by the Nebraska goalkeeper to keep goose eggs on the board. I like the first year Norquette taking that chance early and sending the shot in, but she did have about three of her teammates crashing in. And a steal from Del Carmen just came right in and took it away from Anglem. Ball into the box, headed away by Nicola Hauk. Hauk and Hawk for the Cornhuskers spell their names the same, H-A-U-K, but pronounce it differently. Ball up ahead now to Wait. Pushing past Regazzoni has almost no space, and Regazzoni 
pokes it away. It's going to be a throw in right at the corner for Nebraska. And once again, they are right back in the attacking third. Wouldn't be surprised if we saw that flip throwing again, especially with how the players are loading up in the box. Five Cornhuskers either in or right outside of the box right now. And Zaid will do the flip throw right into the box, loose, and kicked out of there by Olesino over towards Bodie. But Halk will not take possession. She will lose the ball out of bounds, in fact. And the official calling for a water break, it looks like, with 17.04 remaining in this first half. The heat, not horrible, but certainly not nothing. Yeah, certainly seems like the tide has turned slightly. Two yellow cards on the Cornhuskers. Midfielder Haley Peterson and Lauren Anglum probably helping out with that. Certainly their physical play not being as rewarded as they would hope it to be. This is Anglum, though, now with a free kick after a Northwestern foul. It's been a physical game. Eight fouls on the Wildcats, six on the Cornhuskers. And we will see how they take this free kick. Looks like they're going to try and look for Dale. It's over her head, but not over the head of Weber, who heads it into Dale. Nation's leading 16th goal of the game. And an awful turn of events for the Wildcats out of the water break. What a beautiful play design from Nebraska. Yeah, and for Northwestern, it's been those set pieces the last few games that have caused them trouble. A few slip ups on those set pieces, corners, free kicks, whatever it is. Coach Michael Moynihan said that that's been a focus in practice, but another goal allowed. Yeah, he said the team had to be really disciplined and be aware on plays like that, but not a lot of discipline there as both Weber and Dale able to get their head on the ball way too easily and push Nebraska ahead, one nothing. Yeah, definitely been a kryptonite for Northwestern, but obviously can't take away from Weber and Dale. I mean, such physical play and especially just reading that perfectly out of the air. Mm -hmm. Dale, the nation's best offensive player, showing off her nose, or I guess you could say head for the ball there. And as for Weber, now six goals, 10 assists on the year, and now another chance for the Cornhuskers. Shot and a score! An unreal turn of events. It's number 74 on the goal. That is her first goal of her career for the sophomore defender. And she just beat everybody on the Wildcats defense to get it. And you can see Northwestern here maybe a little bit frustrated, even off the kick. Meg Bodie just sending it down in no man's land trying to create any opportunity now, down two. Yeah, and just the span of about three minutes, you've gone from tied 0-0 with a really good offensive team to down multiple goals. You gotta be really careful with how you handle things and not let this game get even more out of hand. That ball rolling down the sideline. Kicked past Norkit and out of bounds by Lauren Anglum. And now Dale takes it away. Poked it away from behind of Ocelino. And here come the Huskers, Belzeal with it. It's the first time we've said her name today. Florence Belzeal leads the team in assists with six heading into today. set, lobbing it up, but right to a Cornhusker Anglin who kicks it out of bounds. Another throw in coming for the Wildcats. Doucette finds Del Carmen, but the ball finds the foot of Nicola Hauk. And now it's up to Dale again. But poked away from her by Regazzoni, right to Peterson. And Nebraska taking possession once more. And we had the hydration break earlier, Bria. At what point does fatigue start to become a problem for this Northwestern defense? Well, especially for a team that's not used to playing as physical and so fast paced like Nebraska forces their opponents to do. So not only the heat, but just that style of play has to be kind of a deadly combination. 
Indeed it does. On the replay there, you see another foul. Once again, it's Norkit tangled up with Gwen Lane. This time, Lane gets the worst of it, but also gets the foul call. Played into Dale. Beautiful to Hill. Hill going for number two. But the shot is well wide, and it's going to be a goal kick. Might have been a cross as well in the direction of Sarah Weber. Just a, maybe a miss hit off the left foot of Briley Hill. And Northwestern will get the goal kick. Played well by Austin. Bouncing ball taken by Hauk. Looking for Dale. Off the head of Austin, but out of bounds. Austin has her work cut out for against Dale, but other than the goal, she's done well so far, making sure Dale's been limited. Anglum, all day, almost found Weber, but just a little too much dip on that chip. And once again, Fitzpatrick will handle the ball. Gotta be careful here to get the ball out of the box. Cornhuskers charging hard. And they are able to get it away. Regazzoni, a long clear, potentially a chance here for Del Carmen, but it's played out of bounds by Anglum. A nice play. Then what looked like a could be developing run. It's less than 12 minutes to go in this first half. Bodie into the box, over the head of Norkit. And to add insult to injury, it looks like they're going to say she fouled Gwen Lane while going for that ball. Yeah, you see it here on the cross. I mean, Norquette just trying to use the backside of Lane as a little bit of an advantage. That's the second or third time that we've seen her do that today. Yeah, tried to push off a little bit. Good ball from Bodie, but just a little too much on it. And here comes Briley Hill once again. She has come on from the bench and has really made this Northwestern team's life miserable. That's two or three runs already in just the four minute span since she arrived to this game. Throw in, out of bounds. So here comes Gwen Lane with it, finds Hill. Hill, looks like that might have gone off an arm, but she retains possession until Olesino comes in, swooping in to take it away. And a foul coming. This time it looks like that's gonna be on Anglum. Might have gotten tangled up with Del Carmen a bit there. Physical play continuing here. That's now the 17th foul in this game. And we've only played 35 minutes. Emma Phillips to the sideline. Nebraska's forward still playing very aggressively defensively, making it tough for Northwestern to get something set up. Bodie over her head to Del Carmen. Del Carmen trying to find Bodie but she can't. Great play there by the Cornhusker defense, and it'll go up to Hill. But she could not find Dale, who was knocked off her run there by Austin. And now Regazzoni in the middle of the field all day for Regazzoni as she crosses the big N in the center. Now she'll take her time, go cross field to Norkit. But once again, it's Gwen Lane poking it out of bounds. And Norkit and Lane have really been marking each other all day. So far, it looks like Lane's winning that battle. And now some substitutions. They really have. I mean, Gwen Lane with three fouls on the day. Megan Norkit with five. The first year, maybe playing a little bit more frustrated. Yeah, it certainly seems as though Lane might not be in Norkit's head necessarily, but certainly in the back of her mind. Throw in from Danica Austin now, who is past midfield. So Northwestern pushing up with nine minutes to play in this first half. Basically everybody at or past midfield except for Fitzpatrick, who as the goalkeeper probably should never get too far out of the goal box. Well, and we mentioned that battle between Lane and Norkit that's been happening all day. Coach Michael Moynihan has seen the frustration from his first year and probably some fatigue as well as now Haley Newman up there on the right side for Norkit. A couple substitutions coming in for the Wildcats. Newman, the sophomore, 10 appearances this year, has not played more than 31 minutes in a game this year and with the heat, 
some fatigue potentially means we could see Norkit again. As it is Northwestern losing the ball. Hard challenge there by Anglum. But here come the Cornhuskers. Belzeal with it. Taking her time. I know. Not a great pass there by Belzeal. Basically right to Ingrid Falls. And Northwestern taking over possession once more. Bodie with it. Bodie, a nice pass to Falls on the sideline. Can Northwestern make something of this? Looks like they're going to take their time to do so. Bodie with plenty of room. Has a chance to go cross field if she wants it. Through ball looking for Mitchell. But a nice aggressive play there by Sammy Hawk to clear the ball near midfield. And here come the Cornhuskers. Hill looking for Dale. But cleared away once again by Austin. And the ball into the stands. Kicked away by Gwen Lane. Like it nearly hit somebody in the head. Doucette trying to go cross field now. Phillips with it at midfield. And she will play it all the way over. Brooke Miller. And now Nebraska looks like they might have another chance. Some very aggressive play from Sarah Weber, who's been doing that all game long. Regazzoni's pass. Tipped by Peterson. Peterson making her life miserable right now. And Northwestern once again moving backwards. Fitzpatrick and Austin playing a little game of back and forth right now with 6.35 to go in the opening half. Now Phillips with it. She will try to find Bodie, but Waite got in the way. And then she lost the ball. And now a chance for Northwestern potentially. Ball in, but taken away. And it's once again Gwen Lane. And a foul called on Northwestern. Looked like Olesino and Lane might have gotten tangled up on that through ball, but Gwen Lane has done an incredible job for Nebraska so far on defense. So the free kick coming for the Cornhuskers. This is Anglum. And Lane clearing it upfield. And that one's gonna bounce into the Northwestern bench where Brooke Miller will take the throw but it once again falls into the clutches of the Cornhuskers. This is Peterson with it near midfield. She finds Dale, Dale finds Hill, and a good setup there. Can Belzeal reach the ball? She cannot, as instead Miller takes it away, but Belzeal right there on her, forcing the throw in. Quick throw to Regazzoni. Dale bearing down on her, gotta be careful here. And Miller clears it away. And something about the Nebraska offense is that they're always going to have some sort of forward progression. Playing very direct toward Northwestern, a lot of long through balls, a lot of balls in the air. So different compared to Northwestern who plays a lot more possession, is not afraid to cut back and just kind of take their time and pass along their back line. No, they are not. And they're doing so again here as Austin has possession. Alicino. Set and back once again to Austin. Austin right to the head of Lane once again, snuffing out yet another potential counterattack. Nutmeg to the ref there. Did Nebraska, and now they're on the chance to attack again. This is Weber. Weber coming flying in is Jordan Zaid. Zaid. The cross, tipped away. Belzeal almost had a chance at it, but a Northwestern defender cleared it to Hauk, who will push it down the sideline for what looks to be another goal kick. Couple substitutions here coming in for Nebraska with just 
about three and a half minutes left in the first half. And Gwen Lane coming out. She has played 41 minutes. That's a season high for her in this game. And this was her fir the first start of the season for her after starting all 20 games last year. She had appeared in just three before today, but certainly making an impact so far tonight. Just three minutes to play now in this opening half. A half that turned almost immediately after the water break. Here comes Briley Hill finding Weber. Weber shoots, and what a save by Riley Fitzpatrick, the sophomore goalkeeper. Full extension to deny Sarah Weber. Here's the replay. Just a great shot by Weber, but man, oh man, Fitzpatrick using every last inch of her arms to make the save. Yeah, that ball was headed to the left bottom corner of the net, but Fitzpatrick doing a beautiful corner job here. This corner kick, kick is so important points. for Northwestern. They cannot give up any room to the Cornhuskers here, cannot go to the locker room down by three. Wait, ball in and over everybody's head, potentially dangerous. As Papula has it now. She's in for really the first time today, and she's going to try and attack two defenders herself. It will not work as Haley Newman takes it away. With two minutes to play in the opening half in what has been a Nebraska-dominated half that didn't start to show on the scoreboard until about 15, 16 minutes ago, and it might show again here. This is Dale. Shot blocked. Austin coming flying in, making the deflection. Bodie with it now. Bodie looking deep for Newman but headed away by Borer. Wait with it. She will play it across the field to Pakula. Her pass deflected. Bodie to Mitchell. Here comes Mitchell. A lot of red jerseys in between her and the goal. Gives it away to Newman. Newman will give way to Doucette. Doucette to Olesino. Olesino looking for somebody Nobody there, I'm not sure whether that was supposed to be Mitchell or Newman filling that space, as it is, neither did. And it's a disappointing end to what looked like a promising attack for Northwestern. Yeah, we've seen that a lot today, is Northwestern is able to string together a lot of great passes and a lot of good looks, but it's just that finishing touch, just one more through ball or, or one more finish that they just haven't seemed to get. It's something that Nebraska has been a lot luckier at so far in this game that now has just 40 seconds remaining in its opening half. One last chance for Northwestern maybe. Here is Regazzoni. And Regazzoni lost it from behind. That's Belzeal who poked it away to wait. And here comes Weber. Weber might be a design for Dale but more likely just a time waster. And Roy Gazzoni on that last possession, she was trying to find a short pass to Bodie in the center, but I would have liked to see her push it out to the left. She had a streaking Ingrid Falls out there. One last opportunity. Nice kick by Regazzoni, but it harmlessly bounces off of Sammy Hawk as we reach halftime here at Martin Stadium. See the difference in the time of possession. Northwestern spent almost 70% of their time of possession on their defensive side of the field. Nebraska, just 29% of their possession time on their defensive side of the field. So definitely something to work on for Northwestern, but down two goals to nil, you definitely need to get something going pretty quickly as that ball glances off of Ella Guyatt's foot as we have officially resumed play here in the second half at Martin Stadium. Beautiful day here in Evanston. Low to mid 70s, not a cloud in the sky. Beautiful view of Lake Michigan as well. As this ball will roll all the way out for a goal kick. So as you mentioned, Brian Nebraska, or Northwestern, excuse me, being a little bit more aggressive early. Over this first minute, they've had a couple opportunities here in Nebraska's defensive half. Yeah, you, and you see Northwestern's whole back line playing very far up. Riley Fitzpatrick also well out of the goal right now, really trying to put the pressure on Nebraska. It's similar to what Nebraska did in the first half because we saw a lot of Nebraska's players who were playing up 
play very aggressive defensively, which helped lead to some of those goals after takeaways. We'll see if Northwestern tries that tactic in this second half to dig back from being down 2-0. Chance here, Del Carmen lost the ball. Into the feet of Prasovsky, she will find Jordan Zaid, and away we go with the Huskers. They're a fast-paced team. Zaid's ball into the box. Nobody home for the Cornhuskers, and the ball bounces harmlessly into the hands of Riley Fitzpatrick, who had a busy first half with two saves and two goals given up. Northwestern playing far side. This is Doucette with it. She will play it up field. Del Carmen getting past her defender, but Nicola Hauk is there to prevent any attack, and she will clear it up to Sadie Waite. But Waite taken away from her by Regazzoni, who goes down after the play, taking her time getting up, but a great play by the sophomore midfielder. Yeah, and she just stays with it, trying to make the turn with a lot of aggressiveness behind her and forces the foul. Yeah, it looked like it might have been a leg get tangled up just a little bit for Regazzoni, but she is okay back up and walking on the field of play as we have a throw in now. That was Gwen Lane, who was so key to the Husker defense in the second half, marking Jalen Eisenhart. One of those seniors honored pregame for the Wildcats. Yeah, this is really Eisenhart's first action of the day. She did not play at all in the first half. And now Nebraska on the attack and a hard foul from behind by Meg Bodie, taking down Sadie Waite from behind. And Bodie receives a yellow card to dismay from the Northwestern faithful, but a dangerous play here by Bodie, as you can see on the replay, just really taking out weight from behind. That could have been really dangerous. Not only that, she got her arm tangled up there and pushed her down, but kept playing while on the ground. Yeah, that's a potentially dangerous play for Bodie. Luckily for all parties, Bodie and Waite are okay. Nebraska will have a free kick from basically right at the midfield line, and they will play it conservatively to Peterson on the far sideline. Tried to set up a back heel pass, but it didn't quite work there as the Northwestern defense ready for it. That ball headed out of bounds into the scorer's table, and this is Del Carmen who will take possession. And the ball finds its way to Olesino. Bodie with it. Bodie looking for Del Carmen. Can Del Carmen track it down? She cannot. The ball just a little too long for Araya Del Carmen going out of bounds. And Nebraska gets a goal kick. And we mentioned in the first half, Bria, there were a lot of opportunities where Northwestern could have used just one more pass or one more finish. That looked like another one of those chances there. Yeah, Del Carmen just couldn't corral it in, but I want to point out, too, that Ella Haas made a beautiful run in front of Bodie to the outside. So Northwestern getting a little bit more creative and trying to create more chances. They've done a decent job at it so far. They've held possession for most of the first five minutes of this second half. We'll see if it can continue. Regazzoni with it finds Bodie. Bodie working through defenders. That ball deflected. Played around finally gets to the feet of Waite. And now Del Carmen will try and play it deep, but it's cleared by Hauk into the stands. And thrown back down to Brooke Miller. Quick throw to Regazzoni, back to Miller, and up to Emma Phillips behind the midfield line. She will clear the ball across to Danica Austin, who crosses midfield looking for a run down the far sideline. But guess who's there, Gwen Lane. That lane is closed today, Bria. She is allowing nothing to come through on her side. And now here come the Cornhuskers once more. Jordan Zaid with it, looking in, but cleared away by Danica Austin, who has done a tremendous job defensively so far. Nebraska retains possession, will get the throw. Here's Guyett with it. Guyett finding Peterson. Peterson spins. Leaves it for Lane. Lane into the box, looking for Dale, but it's cleared away by Phillips. Lane running under the bouncing ball. 
Gets it to Weber. Weber checked by Doucette. And it looks like she was a little too physical trying to clear space for herself, so Northwestern takes over. Doucette clears it into the middle, but right to Prasovsky. Nebraska, dangerous spot here for Northwestern, but a nice clear away. Gets to Bodie, and now here come the Wildcats on the break. Meg Bodie, still dribbling with it, nearly into the box. Finds Haas, Haas going left, she shoots, and it's off the crossbar. <laughs> Kept alive by Araya Del Carmen, into the box. Another shot and a misplay. Looks like that was Jalen Eisenhart with the shot, and once again, Northwestern right there, as you can see on the replay. A beautiful run by Haas, but just a little too high off the crossbar. Similar to the Michigan game, where Northwestern had about four shots go off the post. Once again, denied by the woodwork. Haas with some visible frustration after that one. And Northwestern has been feeling that for the past couple of games. Head coach Michael Moynihan said that they had a practice where they had so many shots go off the crossbar. Haas again. Deflected, aggressive play by Sammy Hawk. But yeah, just continuing that story, yeah. as there was almost a big opportunity there, but head coach Michael Moynihan was talking to us this week, and he said that so many shots were just hitting all over the crossbar, both sides of the post. It was almost comical mm -hmm. how Northwestern couldn't finish. He said he was hoping that those woes had kind of gotten out of the way after that practice where nothing seemed to go right, but doesn't look like it so far. And as you can see on the replay, a nice aggressive play by Hawk to make the save there and prevent the goal. A chance for Nebraska. And that one only would have been good if it was a field goal. That is Eleanor Dale, of course, looking for her seventh multi-goal game of the year. Yeah. And Bria, you mentioned Moynihan saying it was almost comical. He almost laughed when he said he was like, we couldn't score in practice, and he gave a little chuckle, but this is a Northwestern team that has simply been unable to find the back of the net, and those struggles just continuing right now here on this Sunday afternoon. It looks like I have a foul there. That is Brooke Miller tripping up Ella Guyot on the replay there that you just saw. Sadie Waite and Lauren Anglum waiting over the ball for this free kick. Looks like they're probably going to try and push one into the box. Zanglin with it. She does. Phillips falls down, can't get it. Here's Weber. And offsides appears to be the call. It is an offsides. The first of the game for either squad. So that threat by Nebraska snuffed out quickly. And now Phillips has the ball once more. Phillips to Bodie. Bodie to Regazzoni. Regazzoni hurdles the defender, gets it back to Bodie. Northwestern on the run again. Great through ball. Loose ball. Olesino out of bounds. And it'll be a corner kick once again, just one touch away from potentially breaking the drought. And it's going to be a corner kick. And that ball by Bodie was perfectly placed right in between Olesino and Haas. For a second, I don't know if either of them knew who was going to take it, and Olesino led the charge there. Took a couple too many touches. Couldn't finish it. Ball into the box. Bouncing a bicycle kick attempt from Phillips. Bounces harmlessly out of bounds, but yeah, you were right on that replay. Beautiful, beautiful ball by Bodie. Couldn't have asked for a better pass, really, but Northwestern just once again unable to take advantage and the goose egg remains on the scoreboard. And going back to that bicycle kick by Emma Phillips off of that last corner kick, didn't go in the back of the net, but we have seen that before. Yeah, we've seen it from her, well, she, wasn't it last year, right? She went viral last year for her bicycle kick goal. Mm -hmm. Tried it again this time. Would have been a huge help for momentum, unable to get it to go. This ball played up by Weber out of bounds to Nicole Doucette. The official Stopping the clock here. And it appears he's talking to Bodie. Not sure what's going on there. But Bodie appears fine. The official seems to think she's fine as well. And play resumes with the throw right into Meg Bodie. All cleared away. 
And it'll be another throw in for Doucette. Haley Newman also hanging out on that far sideline right now for the Cats. And once again, another throw. Northwestern slowly but surely advancing the ball into the attacking third where they spent a good chunk of these first 10 or so minutes of the second half. Ball into the box. Haas is free. She controls it. Cross in. And the shot is wide by Del Corman. But the official says it was tipped. So we will have a corner kick. Looks like it's going to be Meg Bodie taking it as Ice Spice Blast in the background. See here, Haas got loose. And it looks like the shot by Del Carmen might have deflected off Nicola Hout. Yeah, she knew it right away. She was signaling to the official there. Ball into the box. Another chance for Phillips, maybe. It's high. And Eisenhart takes it, so a chance to reset quickly for the Wildcats as Austin with it now. Her ball is deflected. Cleared to Waite. Now here comes Sadie Waite for the Cornhuskers. Moving across the field. Finding Peterson. Peterson, beautiful ball there to Zaid. And now it's Nebraska's turn to go on the attack. Zaid working on Miller. Miller with the deflection. Zaid still keeping after it. Now dealing with Phillips. And Regazzoni takes the ball away, clearing it to Haas. Peterson gives chase. Haas gets past her. Here come the Cats, a through ball attempt. Diving stop there by Anglum. And the Cornhuskers will settle things down a little bit. Good move there by Gwen Lane. Trying to set things up for Eleanor Dale. Northwestern taking their time, letting the ball roll all the way to Fitzpatrick, who gives it away to Phillips. Phillips to Miller. Oh, a beautiful move by Haas there on the near side. Getting past Zay, getting it to Bodie. Real chance here for Northwestern. Haas again, free behind the defense. Cross in, nobody's home. And it's blocked away by Anglum, and then Zaid clears it out wisely. It'll be a throw in for Northwestern. Instead of a corner, man, oh man, these attacks seem to just keep getting closer, but still no avail. Northwestern is slowly putting the pieces all together, and as soon as they break open, you have a feel, you just have, kind of have a feeling that once that first goal is scored, they'll start raining in because there have been so many great opportunities, but it's just kind of breaking that seal. And we mentioned the practice where the team couldn't seem to score. Moynihan said that once they finally did break the seal, Goal started coming fast and furious. Hopefully that can happen for the team in games as well. As we played 13 and a half minutes in this first half, that throw in for, Nebra for Northwestern, excuse me, went off of Meg Bodie and out of bounds. And now Nebraska will kick it out of bounds. Guy, it couldn't handle it. And Northwestern pushing up 10 players on the offensive half of the field right now. And that could be trouble here if Nebraska can counterattack with Guy. It. Guy it to Briley Hill, but it's taken away from behind by Olesino. Another chance. Aurea Del Carmen running after the ball, but she can't get it. It's cleared away by Nicola Hauk. Northwestern, though, a lot more success on those through balls in the second half. They're actually getting through this time. It's just that the team seems to be unable to get to them first. And that opportunity was created by the combination of give and goes by Olesino and Eisenhart, a lot of good play in the midfield as well. Definitely much improved in the second half so far. Here comes Eleanor Dale, going to take this one herself, but no, Phillips right there to stop her. Beautiful play by the junior defender. Official leaps over the ball. He showed some sneaky athleticism today. He's had the ball go through his legs at least twice. Bodie with it. Miller now on the sideline. Haas. Had a lot of good runs this half. Now she's double teamed. Finds Bodie, a beautiful ball. Bodie with the cross. Loose ball. Deflected away. Looks like Del Carmen tried a bicycle style kick. Regazzoni. Shot blocked off of the foot of Ossolino. Or Olesino, excuse me. Wow, wow. Bodie, a great cross here. Ball deflected up in the air. Del Carmen. Try to mini bicycle kick. 
I guess you call it a tricycle kick because you didn't really go all the way around. But once again, the attacking by Northwestern, providing a lot of opportunities. Ingrid falls now in the game. Her cross right into the hands of Sammy Hawk. I was able to talk to one of the Nebraska players, mothers that traveled in for the game at halftime, and she shared a fun little fact about Hawk. She was talking to me about the broadcast and said that Hawk is in fact a sports media communications major as well. So would say we would get her up in the booth with us, yeah. but well, she's a little busy right now. Yeah, Nebraska does have one of the better journalism schools in the country. That might have been one we were both considering coming out of high school, but we chose purple over red as you do have an all-Nebraska team calling this Nebraska-Northwestern game today on Big Ten Plus. If you're a fan listening, you're really lucky today. You've got two people who know both sides of this affair pretty well. Yeah, I even attended um, some Nebraska soccer camps when I was little, able to be under the guidance of that 2014-2015 team and also head coach John Walker from Nebraska, who's been with the team for 29 seasons. Mm -hmm. So got to know him pretty well at those camps. The only coach they've ever had for women's varsity soccer. I know that a lot of times in sports, coaches are synonymous with programs. But John Walker really is Nebraska women's soccer and has been for about three decades now. Just a wonderful coach. Northwestern, a free kick opportunity here. And it'll be played high into the box. A real chance here if they want it. Phillips header saved again by Hawk. Another great opportunity. That time not enough juice on the header from Phillips. And Samantha Hawk able to gobble it up. That is save number five for her on the afternoon. And Coach Moynihan also said that this would definitely be a game where the battle would be in the air. You see it there with Phillips on that last chance. Battle here for Haas. And they're gonna say Haas was off sides. Maybe standing past Jordan Zay trying to get a little bit of an advantage, unable to do so and Nebraska retakes possession. Both sides have done a great job all afternoon of holding their line, especially Haas, who's had to deal with a lot of free balls coming in, having to time it perfectly, not to slip ahead just a second before, but that time. Yeah, just two combined offside calls on both teams this entire game. Regazzoni with it, finds Haas, finds Olesino. Tried to play it to the side, and now they do get it to the side. It's Miller. Miller to Bodie. Bodie with space. Bodie to Carmen. Back to Bodie. Coming in through the triple team, and Waite takes it away from her. Got a little too aggressive there. And it didn't pay off. Guy it with it. And that ball tipped. Phillips comes in to save it. Haas with it. Battling Zaid. And now the Cornhuskers clear it. That was Houck. Up to Dale, Dale's pass to Hill at midfield. Now Hill will take it. Got a little bit of space. Regazzoni bearing down on her. Finds Dale, but lost the ball. And it's cleared to midfield, but right to Sadie Waite. Waite looking for the through ball. And Gwen Lane nearly got to it. But a nice combo defense there by Doucette and Falls. Lane has the ball now though. Cross in. Headed away by Phillips, but right to a Cornhusker. That's Peterson, lost the ball. Olesino clears it away. And Northwestern stymies the Nebraska threat once more and clears it all the way to Houck on the other side of the field. Houck will respond in kind by clearing it right back to Northwestern. Lane with it after a poor header. Lane, the shot high by Sarah Weber. Good look by Weber, continuing to keep up the aggressiveness, but nothing doing there 19 minutes Four into this second half. You can see there are open eight, shots eight, by eight, Weber for the most part, but it looked like Regazzoni might have been bearing down on her, unable to get it to go. You see the substitution there for Nebraska. Ella Rudney in. 
from Grand Island, New York. There is also a Grand Island, Nebraska, but she's from one slightly farther east. A lot of Nebraska-born players on this Cornhusker lineup. A lot of those players coming from Lincoln. Mm -hmm. But also some of the suburbs too. Gretna, Nebraska, La Vista, Nebraska produced quite a few of these, pl these players. Ella Guyot, in fact, played in high school on the same team as Lauren Anglum. Both of them are now playing on the same team collegiately as well. Well, and on the other side of the ball for Northwestern, you have the triple threat of Ingrid Falls, Bridget Mitchell, and Nicole Doucette, who've been playing with each other since they were in elementary school. So pretty special for all three of those seniors to share the same field, especially on senior day. Mm -hmm. And that probably helps in recruiting, too, if you're Michael Moynihan or John Walker to say, like, Hey, you remember the teammate you played with in high school? Yeah, she's here too now. You can just keep doing what you've been doing in high school. Chance for Alessino. She will play it all the way over to Falls. Falls. That should be a corner kick. They're going to give it a goal kick. I thought that might have gone off a of Husker. If it did indeed go off of Ingrid Falls, a great play there by Briley Hill to force the goal kick. And a substitution coming in for Northwestern as well. Megan Norkit back in the game the first year. Norkit. Five fouls already in this game, and now another foul call. This one is on Ella Haas, who is despondent at the call. Here's the replay. And a collision from behind with Weber, who goes down. I could see that being a foul, but I can also understand how some Wildcats fans would be upset at that call. Oh, and a throwing violation. It appears from Sarah Weber. Looks like North Nebraska is still going to keep it, though. Zaid backing up, looking like she's going for a flip throw once more. And she does. But it's headed out of bounds by Brooke Miller. I got to wonder what type of training that takes to be able to do a flip throw, because that does not look like an easy feat you know, physically. You know, Brendan, I've tried it. Uh, I've had to try that at soccer practice, and mine did not look as pretty as that. I mean, what do you think the secret is? There's got to be so Is it like in the core and the legs? Well, maybe? you have to be able to do a front handspring uh, to be able to pull that off. So you have to do that without the ball first and then balance on top of the ball and use that momentum forward. So some gymnastics ability turning out to be useful on the soccer field as well. Northwestern with the throw. We have not seen any flip throws from them. Mostly because, as we've mentioned quite a few times, they're a slightly less aggressive team than the Cornhuskers. But a chance to maybe be aggressive now is Norkit with it. Keeps the ball alive, but it's cleared out of bounds by Hauk. Miller going in quickly to Regazzoni. Back to Miller. What a move! And she thought she was fouled from behind by Weber as the ball went out of bounds. But the officials say it was legal, and Zaid will throw the ball in for Nebraska. That throw right back into the clutches of the Wildcats. Regazzoni, Olesino, looking to clear it across the field, and she does to Doucette. Doucette down the sideline. She'll get it back. Playing a little bit of catch there with Ingrid Falls. Falls, a nice move there. To separate herself, looking for Regazzoni, who's got it. Good touch by Regazzoni. Finding Norkit. Norkit goes down. And now here's the call. Looks like that was Ella Guyot. Right on the edge of the box. Norkit getting up gingerly. Looks like she's okay. And the question now is, is this going to be worthy of a penalty kick? Because that might have been inside the box. I think it's just on the edge. Here's the replay. And yeah, just outside the box, Norkit went down hard. And pardon me, that was actually Reese Borer, not Ella Guyot, making the play. 
And we saw a creative free kick from Northwestern in the first half from roughly this distance. We'll have another chance here. And once again, same as in the first half, Emma Phillips unmarked on the far side. Megan Norkett also with a lot of space. And that, that last free kick that you're referring to, about the same spot last half, that one was kicked directly into the Nebraska wall. Got to avoid that this time, you'd hope. Olesino and Regazzoni over the ball. Who is it going to be? Regazzoni chips it up. And Phillips, the drought ends. Seven halves later, it's Emma Phillips, the junior defender, putting her head on the ball into the back of the net. And for the first time in two weeks, the Northwestern Wildcats are on the board. And we pointed it out before, she's just left wide open on the backside. You can't do that to the most oh. fearless player in the air for the Wildcats. That's, that's almost inexcusable defense. If I'm Sammy Hawk, I'm talking to my wall after a play like that saying, guys, wh what are you doing here? There cannot be a player unmarked in the box on a free kick. As Mambo number five plays, Northwestern doesn't need five goals, but now they finally have one. And that may lead to the dam bursting for this team, a much needed goal. And the drought finally ends to the delight of the crowd. And the head of Emma Phillips, that drought is finally over. And Bria, all of a sudden, there's a lot of momentum on the purple side in this game. Yeah, they've dominated offensive possession throughout the entire second half. So. Interested to see what happens now that they finally got one goal across. They force a turnover, here's Bodie with it. Bodie, Haas is off sides. So she'll have to get back on as Olesino gets it. Haas onside now, another through ball to her. She's able to run it down a few feet short of the line and play it in. But a nice play there. Looks like that might've been Reese Bohr, the freshman defender, clearing it out. Haas with it again. Trying to break down Guyot. Almost does. Great move by Haas. Better shield by Guyot to prevent the run. Weber with it now. And her ball poked away by Phillips, the goal scorer, making an impact on defense as well. Ball into the box and a header by Norkit wide. A lot more aggression from the Wildcats in this second half, Bria. You can see that every single Northwestern player is just so hungry for the ball. I mean, especially looking at Ella Haas on the left side of the field, she's calling for it every single time. And I think that they're just kind of feeding off of each other now. Now that they got that one goal through, they kind of know that this is a possibility now. Yeah, Haas with three or more shots in four of her last six games. She's got four already today, two of them on goal. One of the more aggressive players on this Northwestern squad seems to be feeding into her teammates as well. Nebraska now on the attack. This is Peterson with it, tripped up by Regazzoni, and that was definitely not legal as Haley Peterson goes down. Chance for Nebraska to take a free kick now. And as you can see on the replay there, just a takedown by Regazzoni, certainly nothing excessive, but also definitely nothing legal. Here comes the free kick now. Looks like it'll be Sadie Waite to take it. And she will. No, she will not. Ball into the box, past everybody. Closest Husker there was Briley Hill, but it was behind her. Gordon Looks like that might have been Lauren Anglum taking it. And Jordan Zaid now back into the ball game, one of the starting defenders. And that is Sarah Weber going off. So it looks like Nebraska is starting to play more defensively with a one goal lead in just 17 minutes to play. Olesino with the run, finds Bodie. Bodie, nothing but green grass in front of her. Ball on the side to Falls. Ingrid Falls, cross, out of bounds, corner kick. Solid defensive play there by Glenn Lane. And now Meg Bodie with a chance to knot things up on the corner kick. 
Michael Moynihan said earlier this week he wants the team just being hungry to put themselves in position to score. They're in a position to score right now. Kick from Bodie. Into the box, oh, loose ball there. There's a Cornhusker down. And Briley Hill will let it go out of bounds. And still down in the goal box. Potentially a cleat to the ankle. Hopefully for the Cornhuskers it's nothing more than that. As Northwest will have the throw slightly deeper down the near side this time. Brooke Miller will take. She'll find Norkett. Norkett got shoved off her spot a little bit. No call. And now Dale with the clear, but Phillips right there to take it from her. Regazzoni. Regazzoni was looking for Alessino, couldn't find her. Peterson trying for Dale, but once again, Phillips stepping in. Dale has been almost silent in this second half. The nation's leading goal scorer looking a little frustrated at her lack of touches. Bodie escapes the clutches of Prasovsky, but her ball is deflected away. And now Dale finally gets it but loses it again. Great defense there by Danica Austin to cut off her lane. Oh, and then Dale juked out of her cleats by Brooke Miller. Regazzoni going cross field to do set. 15 minutes to play in the game. Bodie with it. Has falls to the side if she needs her. She will need her. Falls into the box. Headed away, had Norkit running towards the goal. And that one, Cornhuskers kicked it off each other. Looked like that deflected off the head of Lane. So Northwestern retains possession once more. Playing it back to near midfield here is Phillips with it. Got some time. Now doesn't as Belzeal, as Wade approaches, excuse me. Miller. Haas with it and a throw in for Northwestern. Looking for Norkit down the sideline. And she controls it with Hauk bearing down on her. Norkit to Miller. Miller to Regazzoni in the middle. Regazzoni, nice move into the box. Haas, the shot right to Hawk. Another great offensive effort for Northwestern. But Sammy Hawk with her sixth save of the afternoon. You can see here just a beautiful move by Haas to set things up. Got it through the defender's legs, but could not get it past Hawk. Wait to Guyot. Back to Guyot off the foot of Dale. Here come the Cornhuskers. Guyot with it. Guyot the shot deflected off of Briley Hill. And an offsides is called. So Hill, wrong place at the wrong time for the Cornhuskers who have looked, honestly, a little discombobulated offensively in the second half. Yeah, they just haven't had as many opportunities as they had in the first half. And I think a big part of that is Northwestern is playing a lot more patient. They're not forcing their own opportunities on their offensive side, and so they're playing a lot more possession. They're not trying to give the ball away right back to Nebraska. Yeah. Ne Nebraska just three shots on goal in this half. And Haas knocked down from behind by Zaid. Loose ball squirting into the hands of Hawk. Northwestern fans wanted a foul. They will not get one. So another lucky break for the Nebraska defense. And that's got to be something. As Guyot takes down Miller but the ball don't lie as Miller takes possession back quickly. Looking for Olesino. Olesino with a run, with a chance, with a shot. Too high for Josie Olesino. Still looking for a score since her injury, but what a run that by the have, senior. That would have been a highlight reel type of play for Olesino, weaving through several defenders and taking that shot at the very top of the box. Orea Del Carmen back in. She was one of the seniors honored today as well. Is it going to be her, perhaps, making the play? She hasn't scored or assisted since September 3rd. Is this perhaps her time as we reach 12 minutes to play in what's become a tight Big Ten contest? Lane, throwing it in. 
physical effort there by the Cornhuskers to keep possession. Looking for Dale, but she will not get it. Huskers will get a corner, though, as Danica Austin cleared that away on the wrong side of the flag. Yeah, that almost went to the left side of it. Danica Austin trying to force a throw in inside, but just couldn't turn her hips fast enough. Sadie Wait now to throw in, or to kick the corner, excuse me. Four Cornhuskers in the box. And she'll try a near side to Peterson. Ball kicked out of the box by Del Carmen, and a shot. Ooh, that was very dangerous. Looked like that was Prasoski who got a foot on it, but kicked it wide of the goal. Phillips quickly playing it up right to Prasoski. Dangerous turnover here, Prasoski. Tried to find weight, but couldn't. A beautiful defensive play by Phillips. Dale with it. Dale looking for weight. Can Northwestern clear it? Dale with it again. Shoots and deflected. I think that might have been Phillips who got in the way just in time. But the nation's leading scorer, who is also second in shots per game nationally, continuing to try and find her second goal of the afternoon. One half year's corner kick, number 11, C. Wade. You can see her there on the screen right now, standing about the center of the box, maybe a little closer to the far side, but marked well as the corner comes in from Waite. She was looking for Weber, whose header is deflected by it looked like Megan Norkett. And that kick deflected away as well. This time it was Del Carmen on the deflection. So Weber, who contributed the assist earlier to Dale, trying to score herself, but finding a little less luck. Under 10 minutes to play now in this ball game, and it's another corner kick for the Huskers, who have now started to really try and stamp out any Northwestern hopes of a comeback with how they've been doing on offense lately. Kick from Waite. Looking for Weber again. This time Weber tried to fit it into Peterson, but couldn't. And that went off a of Cornhusker, so Northwestern regains possession. Peterson couldn't quite handle it. But Nebraska playing aggressively on defense, and we've got a foul, much to the dismay of Dale, who was the offending party there, it looked like, as Northwestern will take back over and try and put together another good run. Ooh, risky pass there, Wait bearing down in the box, but it's cleared away to Bodie. Bodie, that has to be something. That was right in front of the official. On a missed call there, the physicality becoming a little more pronounced here as we near the end of this half. And that ball cleared away by Prasoski. Norkit was battling for the ball as well. The physicality really starting to be used more and more by the Huskers as they try and prevent Northwestern from completing the comeback. Ball down the near side to Miller. Brooke Miller with it. Off of Zaid. Miller, quick throw. Olesino with it. Olesino to Haas. Been so key to the offense this second half. Haas to Miller. Miller looking far side. Del Carmen wasn't there in time. But Doucette has it. Now Bodie. Eight minutes to play. Bodie. Cross in. A chance. But the shot is saved. Ella Haas. Had a header, but once again, Sammy Hawk, who's been almost untouchable throughout the day, is there. Haas in great position to get that cross from Bodie, but just couldn't get it into one of the corners, directly into the hands of Hawk. Yeah, good look there, but as you mentioned, right towards Hawk, and Hawk is not a goalie who will miss on an opportunity like that to make a save. Tough collision there as the ball is cleared to Phillips. Phillips will go cross field to Miller. Excuse me, to Austin who goes to Miller. Regazzoni now. Back to Miller. To Austin. Wait, giving chase. Phillips with it. Finding Haas. Excuse me, that was Bodie. Bodie to Norkit. 
Norkit setting up the cross. Ball is in, deflected loose, shot. Bodie saved by Gwen Lane. Are you kidding me? An empty net basically after Hawk went down. But it's Gwen Lane. That lane is under construction. You can't go in there. What a beautiful play by Lane. And here's another set piece opportunity for Northwestern. Already able to capitalize on one of them today. Emma Phillips well marked this time. Bodie's kick is high. It looks good. Phillips again! She's done it again! Emma Phillips with a brace, her fifth goal of the season, second header of the day, and all of a sudden, we are knotted at two goals apiece. This is Emma Phillips' world, and we're just living in it. Two goals via set pieces to tie this game up for Northwestern. We are not worthy. And how about the pass by Meg Bodie on the corner kick? Here's the replay. I mean, you really can't ask for a better look. I want to know what kind of vertical numbers that Emma Phillips has, because she got so high up in the air. I mean, she is just playing her heart out today. It's not even just being in the right place at the right time. I mean, she's so talented, able to read it so well, and has so much tenacity and when she she's battling. She knows the game. She's played all but nine minutes for Northwestern this year. And on set pieces like that where you need to use your head, it helps that she is three inches taller than any Nebraska position player. She's 5'11". The tallest Nebraska player is also 5'11", but that's Sammy Hawk, and Hawk is not battling for headers with Phillips. So Phillips has an advantage every time the ball's coming into the box. Just about six minutes left in this one. A much different game than we had when we were coming out of the half. Northwestern was down 2-0. The Northwestern fans chanting their support. Ball into the box, high over the goal. And Bria, you mentioned it's been a tale of two halves. It really has. In the first half, Nebraska had 10 shots. Northwestern had five. In the second shot, Nebraska had five shots. Northwestern so far, 14. They have just dominated possession, and they're doing so again but Alessino can't get to that ball and Hauk pokes it away. Now a chance potentially for Weber. Weber shakes the defense. Shot, Dale wide open, and the nation's leading scorer comes right back to give Nebraska the lead with five minutes to play. An unreal defensive collapse by the Wildcats. Unless, of course, Northwestern can answer in the next 300 seconds. That one, not a good start as the through ball looking for Del Carmen will result in a goal kick. But man, that's a defensive lapse that you have to avoid. And for a defense that's generally been very good in Big Ten play at not giving up goals during actual play, that's a really tough look to leave the nation's best offensive player that wide open. Emma Phillips with it now. Phillips and Bodie play back and forth. Regazzoni calling for it in the middle. Bodie with it. She finds Norkit. Norkit surrounded by Cornhuskers and they poke it away. Dale with it now. Dale's pass. Deflected by Phillips, and she spins and gets it to Norkit while still on the ground. A nice play there. Here's Haas. Haas has the sidelines. As Ingrid falls. Falls. Making moves. It's Bodie. Bodie puts it in. Unmarked Wildcat knocked down by Hawk. And still down. I believe that's Del Carmen. Pushing herself up off the ground as the play stops. That was a hard collision between her and Sammy Hawk. I'm surprised that there was no foul call given how these officials have called the physicality of this game. Norkit and Phillips right next to each other in the box, and Regazzoni and Bodie basically right there as well. Bill Carmen and Haas in there as well. 
Ball is in, ball is free and saved by Hawk. A beautiful look. That might have been Phillips again looking for a hat trick, but Hawk gobbles it up. Another great corner kick this time from Ocelino, and it was Phillips. Nearly her third of the game, but Hawk with save number eight on the afternoon. Bodie looking for Norkit. Cleared, but into Olesino. Del Carmen with it. Del Carmen lost the ball, and now they're gonna call a foul on her as Peterson goes down after being hit from behind. And there's only three minutes to go in this game. If Northwestern's gonna get a goal, they're gonna have to do it real quickly. Here's the play, and decent amount of contact, but as you can see, Del Carmen very upset with the call there. Nebraska loses it out of bounds, so Northwestern with a chance to throw in. Got to move quickly. Haas on a run. Haas on a run. Haas with the header, but too many Cornhuskers in the area. Quick throw in, there's two balls on the field right now. There are two balls on the field right now. I'm not sure what's going on at this point. Bodie clears the ball that's not in off the field. And another near goal. Unbelievable, two games going on at once basically. And now it's Hawk that's down after colliding a little bit with Haas who nearly had the goal. She gets back up quickly. It appears that it's gonna be a corner kick. The clock stopped at 2.02. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see there, and looks like it was not in fact Haas, but a Cornhusker teammate. That's Jordan Zaid, who undercut Hawk a little bit while they were going for the ball. And Hawk one of, is okay though. One of the most unusual instances that you'll see, Nebraska cleared that ball all the way into the stands and it got thrown back onto the field and wasn't cleared away for about a minute there. And so Meg Bodie actually had to leave the offensive opportunity and clear it away just so that there wasn't confusion or that their momentum wouldn't be stopped by you know an official stopping mm -hmm. play to have that ball out. So just a lot of confusion there, really unfortunate turn of events, but obviously glad to, too. glad to see Hawk okay at the end Four of that as well. And Hawk already a season Four. high in saves with eight, her career high is 13. She's probably not gonna reach that unless Northwestern can muster a goal in these final 100 seconds, which is seeming unlikely with Nebraska in possession. But this is soccer and anything can happen. Olesino, Regazzoni, ball over the head of Haas, falls charging hard and it's played out of bounds. 120 to go and a nice play by the fan to that, get the ball in quickly. That was actually Tyler Warren from the men's soccer team helping. Showing off his skills. And a little bit of inner squad support there. A minute 10 to go. Doucette. Haas was unmarked but couldn't get it to her. Olesino pressured weight. And that ball will go out of bounds at midfield with 60 seconds to play. It's pressure time now. Falls, box, loose ball, Briley Hill with it. And she clears it away to the bench. And the bench sets it up quickly. 35 seconds. Ball in again, Regazzoni with it. Header, Bodie. Bodie goes down. No call coming. Bodie was trying to play on the ground, doing anything she can to keep the play alive. 20 seconds now, Northwestern trying to keep their hopes alive, but certainly on life support now. 15 seconds. And it's cleared high. Ten, nine, eight, Nearly out of the stadium, seven, actually that six, five, maybe did go out of the four, stadium. Three, three seconds, two, Norka one, goes down and Nebraska three. will survive and get their second Big Ten victory of the season, thanks to the seventh multi-goal game from Eleanor Dale. Dale, the nation's leading scorer 
played all 90 minutes for the sixth consecutive game.